I'm CJ Peterson, and welcome to The Journey is Real, where we talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their hearts. Today, my guest is Dorothy Graham, and we titled her podcast, The Overcomer, Facing Challenges with Faith and Courage. Thank you for coming on today, Dorothy. Thank you so much for having me today, CJ. It's really an absolute pleasure to get to talk to you. Awesome. And I enjoyed talking with you a little bit before we started. Um, we had a little bit of trouble connecting, but we were able to finally reach there. But that was on my behalf. Um, as you know, and if you've been following the podcast, I had some personal issues we were dealing with. Um, if not, refer back to the podcast before this one. Um, Dorothy, you've also had a lot go on in your life. Um, yet through it all, you've held on with faith and courage. Would you please share a little bit of your story with us? Sure. Um, well, it, I guess my journey kind of starts back um, when I, growing up, you know, I was bullied all through public school for my weight, um, which led to low self-esteem, which led to opening myself up to abusive relationships, you know, and just really, um, there were some very low moments in my life where I, I wasn't sure, I, I thought it'd probably be easier for me to just, you know, not be on earth uh, and uh, instead of enduring what I was doing. But I also knew that that's not was not never an option for me. Mm -hmm. um, my uncle took his life Christmas Day 23 years ago, mm -hmm. and I knew how devastating that was for my family, for myself, and I knew I just could not do that uh, to my family and especially to my nephews. You know, my nephews are like my kids, and I it's funny because the I took a picture of them back when they were little. Uh, I took them. I think it was like a Walmart special type thing, mm -hmm. and uh, I kept that that picture on my wall and then when I went wasn't when I didn't wasn't around that picture I had a visual in my head so every time I thought that you know life was just way too hard I would just bring that picture to my mind and I'd see their smiling faces and I thought you know there's just you know there's more to life than the problem that I was facing right and, and a lot of people don't understand what they're doing they you know it is an easy way out however um another avenue to consider is the fact that God's taking you through this to prepare you for something later that you're going to need that strength for. I, I, totally, exactly. And, you know, part of the journey is growing up, my parents have been chronically ill. Mm -hmm. My mom went undiagnosed with angina and lupus for over 20 years. Wow. You know, she, I would come home, she'd be sleeping, you know, so a lot of the responsibilities of of the house, I basically took on because, you know, my dad was working full time, my mom was sick. And then my dad started getting sick, you know, started with a heart attack at 30. Wow, eight that's years young. Ago. Sorry, so that's young. That is young, very young. Uh, and then about seven, eight years ago, he had a, like, it's just a common cold. And it turned out, he's went into renal failure. He, um, he's the only one that we know of that has gone off dialysis without a kidney transplant. I had the entire world praying for my dad <laughs> and it was just, it was unbelievable. Like I would, and my mom was at home with, with pneumonia. So I was the only one, he was in a hospital about an hour away from where we lived. And uh, at that time I was, had a struggling business going on. I was working part-time for a friend of mine, cleaning houses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, it was eating up my savings going back and forth, but it was my dad, you know, I had to do that. So, um, I finally got through that. He, I, all I said that year is he got sick just before Christmas. I said, all I want for Christmas is my dad to come home. You know, whether I had to take him for a treatment right after, it, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. I got my wish. He was home for oh, Christmas. Goodness. Yeah. And then I had to take him back for another dialysis appointment the next day, but that's okay. Uh, so May of the following year, he got a complete clearance. His blood levels were up. His uh, cell counts were up. Everything normal. Never having a problem with that since. Um, and then that's, you know, amazing. that's like unheard of. That's, you know, praise God. That's like a miracle. That, that is a miracle. I, there's been so many miracles in my life. It's, <laughs> it's just like unbelievable. Okay. Um, now you say that, but had you done what you intended to do in high school and growing up, you wouldn't have had that blessing. Exactly. I, that that's just totally true. You know, and I think part of, you know, when I was going through that abusive relationship, I, I was in that relationship, I think I started when I was 30 years old and it lasted for four years. And it was like coming home, I wasn't sure if I was gonna come home to Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, it was more of a mental game. Uh, everything was my fault. And, you know, I, I can't be completely convinced that no matter what, it was my fault. And, and then I started to believe that. Mm -hmm. And I, di I didn't feel, um, because I, my self-worth was at its all-time low, I didn't feel that I could get anything better. So I thought, you know, stick with it. Yeah. And For those who have been watching the show, they're aware that my, I do have a domestic violence background as well. And so I totally get it. It's like, they make it so that it's just them in your world and that's it. So you don't have anybody to turn to, to do a check of, is this really what I'm saying? Is this really who I am? Is this, and then eventually you're going to hit a point where, um, I tell people it's like putting the frog in tempered water and then heating it up. Whereas yeah. if you put a frog in boiling water, they're going to jump out right away. Cause exactly. usually the first question asked is why didn't you leave? Well, I didn't realize what was going on. And when exactly. you realize it, it's almost too late. Well, that's the thing. And I never told my parents because that's not something I wanted my parents. I actually have shielded my parents from a lot of stuff because I didn't think that, you know, it, it, I didn't want my parents to know. I, that's, that wasn't something that I wanted. I wanted them to think my life was perfect, you know, and why get them involved in that? They had enough. I mean, they were sick all the time. They didn't need that on top of everything else. Um, but it took uh him being very disrespectful to my father at a family barbecue to make me start thinking well what the heck is going on mm -hmm. and i i and there was other things like i i would i was working full time plus i w had a side business so i was going to oshawa which is about 3 hours away from where we lived uh for some corporate training and i would spend a lot of time away just because i didn't want to be at home mm -hmm. but then um there were some, there were some things that I had seen that I let go. Like I knew that he was talking to somebody else, but I didn't want to believe it. Cause I thought this guy, there's no way anybody else would want to be with him. I mean, he's so freaking miserable. Right. They're and I, really, they're people, normally really charismatic. That's, yeah. that was what initially attracts you to them. And then it's like, and all of a sudden you're in like the widow's web, black yeah. widow's web. Well, well, that's totally the truth. I mean, and we spent a good, um, and back then, you know, I guess because to keep him, because I didn't think I could get anything better. It was like, you know, buying him things and stuff like that, which totally looking back is totally stupid, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, and, but it, in a way I'm glad it happened that way because at the end I figured out, uh, I knew that he was actually cheating because when I, after it was all completely done, he, his uh, ex said to me, well, I knew that he had new underwear and he, she asked who bought it for him. And he said, it was, it was, I had bought it for him. And so there were things that she's telling me, no one else would have known. So therefore I knew for sure that it was, it was happening, even though I didn't think that that would ever happen, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Um, but what really got me out of that relationship is, I, like I said, I had felt an all time low and that was not like me. And I, there was thinking different thoughts that, you know, should never have been thought. And I'm like, okay, how can I get out of this? Because now I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I want to get out, but we were living in his parents rental home. So, you know, all, everything was in my name. So I thought, how can I get out of this? And, um, it's, he kept on after me to get to buy different things. And I was a guitar hero of all things. And I said, listen, you lost your job. I'm the only one that's been working. You finally just got back to work. There is no extra money to buy this and don't ever ask me again. And we were with his friends. So at that point I didn't care because maybe I shouldn't have said it in front of his friends. So, but the thing of it was like, I was taught, I was past the point of caring at that time. And it's, it's funny because as I was standing in Walmart saying this to him, it's like there was a giant veil that I had seen in front of me. And it was like God had ripped the veil from the left to the right. And it was unbelievable. It was the first time that I knew that that's it. We had drawn a line and God's getting me out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, I had just, um, backing up one second, I had just in that financial services company I was with, there was a lady that wanted me to start attending her church. And I thought, okay. So I started going to church with her and it was a church that my mom's friend had brought me to when I was younger. And excuse me, I hadn't been in it for about 10, 15 years. 
and uh, she, Karen had bought me a Bible. That was the lady that brought me to this church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was sitting there reading it one day and he goes, what are you doing? And I said, I'm reading a Bible. Karen gave it to me. What's the problem? And he says, well, you're just freaking me out. You're just changing. And, and uh, I said, well, I don't understand what the problem is. I said, your dad is, you know, he attends church at the Catholic church. He is an usher. He does stuff in the church. I don't understand why it's a bother to you that I start going. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, you're just changing. And I'm like, you're damn right. I'm changing. (laughs) Uh, So that was in November. I said, and and you were changing for the better. And the other thing people don't fully understand is that it's more difficult to get over the mental abuse than it is the physical. The bruises heal pretty quick. You're still, you know, going to remember your body will still remember it. Um, but the mental and the battle that goes on in your mind is stronger and worse than any physical could do outside of killing you. Yeah, well, that is totally true because I mean, I went through 10 years after being in that relationship, trying to find myself, mm-hmm. trying to get over all of that. Um, and it, it's funny because God didn't reveal everything to me all at once. It's like it was, it took three, two to three years for me to find out everything that happened in that relationship. And so just when you think you're done healing, some more stuff, trauma comes up. So mm-hmm. it's like, I always say healing is like a layer, peeling off layers of onions yep. because, um, you know, just when you think you get through one thing, then you got to get through another and then you got to get through another and then you got to get through another. And it's funny because I'm, I'm married now to an amazing guy, but there's, he, he can say something to me even now after I've been, you know, and I teach people how to, you know, go through the, the steps of the healing process and he'll say something not knowing and it will trigger me, mm-hmm. but I have the steps now that I take to wait, wait a minute. This isn't actually a Joe problem. This is like a past problem. You don't re- overreact to my husband about it, you know, and I take my steps tr- myself through the steps to heal uh, and go through that and find out what the lie is and reverse it back into, you know, the actual truth so that I'm not thinking that lie anymore. The thing to remember though, is when you're going through the healing process, you cannot do it all at once. You have to do it layer by layer to get down to that core lie. Cause if you did it too much, it'd be overwhelming. You wouldn't be able to focus. I know some people are like, well, I just want to get it over with. It usually takes twice as long to process and heal to get through something than the initial. So if it was four year relationship, it's going to take you a good eight years of counseling to get through it and to work through all the different, you know, nuances of that relationship. Right. That That's totally the truth. And, you know, I, and then still, like I said, you know, it, it, it your depends. Body, your body still remembers it. And there's still those little lies that are going to be in there that you got to combat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. exactly. So don't give up hope and ladies and gentlemen, because there, there's definitely, you know, once you get past that, that's, it, there's definitely freedom. Right. And it, One thing that always got me was, you know, you are a pearl of great price and that's in the Bible. And so one thing that I did was I actually had a pearl necklace. So whenever those feelings would come, I'd reach up and I'd touch the pearl necklace. And I'd remember that I'm a pearl of great price. I am a daughter of the king, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you kind of have to play almost a mind game on yourself a little bit to get through it all. Right. And to process it all. Um, so thank you for sharing. That's like huge. A lot of stuff that you had to walk through and wade through. Um, and that takes a lot of courage. You also have a book out. And is that book about specifically about this journey? Uh, yes, actually, um, after I did some healing, God had told me, you know, I think you should write this book to help other women. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, when do I have the time, God? Like when I get, <laughs> when I retire, I'll get to it. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, silly child. So then the pandemic hit and he's like, now you have a little bit of time. <laughs> so I, uh, started the book in March of last year when the pandemic hit and it, it finished writing it finished writing it uh, by the end of July. And the book is completely about um, my life journey, you know, of abuse and bullying and low self-esteem. And finally, at the end, uh, you know, turning it all around and finding true love and finding, um, 
you know, healing in that and, and trying to help other women. Um, so they, they know that they're not alone and that, you know, if I can overcome anything, so can they, because I'm just, I'm no different than anybody else. I'm just a normal human being here with, with pains and things like that. And, uh, so I wrote the book, it got, uh, republished, uh, for the last time in uh, January of 31st of this year of 2021 and um, yeah you can find it on Amazon um, it's I basically wrote the book to help other women because it's very lonely in those times that you know you're going through that you're struggling through that whether um, it be you know abuse or whether it be having to deal with family traumas and things like that um, I got engaged in November of 2018, and in no, April of 2019, my dad got uh, diagnosed with cancer for the very first time. So trying to work full time, planning a wedding, and dealing with my hero um, mm -hmm. having cancer was just absolutely insane. And I finally signed up for, at the cancer clinic, we were given the option to have a social worker. So I'm like, okay, sign me up because, you know, I have dealt with all my parents' illnesses, like anything from heart and stroke to diabetes to you name it, they've had it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I was a good soldier and I, I marched on, but I, I'm like, this time I need, I need somebody. She was an amazing woman and she taught me all about self-care because I don't know about you, but my grandmother always told me, you know, you got to take care of your man. You got to take care of everybody. Uh, it's selfish to take care of you. But so yeah, I, there's one thing I've, I've learned through all of my stuff that I've had to wade through is if you can't take care of somebody else, if you're not healthy, exactly. You can't be there for the other person. If you're not healthy and taking care of yourself, there's nothing selfish about it. You can still care for your family. You can still care for your husband. You can still care for your children, for your parents, for whoever needs you, but just make sure to take time for yourself. My, we lost yeah. my dad in July of 2019. And as you know, and people who are following me are aware, we lost our mom in January of 27th, January 27th of this year. And so my sister was their caregiver for going on about 10 years, 10 or 11 years. And so when all of this was done, I told her, I said, you need, there's a lot that we're still waiting through because she has to sell the house. We have to move her and all that stuff and get her close to the rest of the family. And I, okay. you need to take care of yourself and take some time off. Just give yourself a brain break and take some yeah. time off for yourself. All through January, my brother and sister-in-law and my husband and I split the week. So she was never alone. So when she needed those times where she could just go to the bedroom and close the door and shut the world out, she could, and she could process but that allowed her to have the strength on this end of things to be able to take care of stuff. So right. you've got to take care of yourself or you cannot take care of anyone else. Exactly. Yeah. And that would, you know, that was a big thing that I learned through that process with mm -hmm. the cancer. Um, so, and How now, he now, well, he, he got healed from that. And then December 8th of this past year, he was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. So right. we, uh, <laughs> please keep him in your prayers because he had a CAT scan on the 5th of March and we get the results of that on the 10th of March. So um, he is, uh, I'm fully believing that God has healed him a second time. Um, I, I'm trying not to let my faith waver in that. And like I said, I've had uh, a lot of people praying for him on this round as well. So I, I just, I'm fully trusting, knowing and believing that God is going to heal him again. And, and then he's going to leave him alone with the cancer. Cause I don't think. Please leave him alone. <laughs> leave him alone. The poor man has dealt with enough, um, you know, and they're taking care of my grandmother who I believe is in the beginning stages of dementia. So it's, uh, it's been a toll, you know, it, it just seems like I always say we're coming in and out of chaos. Right. And it's just, I would just like a month though that nothing happens. <laughs> Just to breathe. <laughs> you have a really, um, I want to say fascinating is the word story because you have your lows, but you have the strength in God that's carried you through all of that load. You have 
the faith of knowing that Jesus walked with you through that whole thing and you were never alone through all of it. Um, so people who want to continue to follow your story and find out about your dad and, you know, follow your grandparents and see how that all goes, how can they find you online? Yep. You can definitely find me on Facebook at uh, www.facebook.com slash Dorothy, D-O-R-O-T-H-Y dot Graham, G-R-A-H-A-M three. Okay. Or I'm definitely on uh, LinkedIn at uh, Dorothy Ann Elizabeth, no, Dorothy Ann Graham Odell. Sorry, I dropped the Elizabeth part because it was too long. <laughs> Somebody made fun of it, so I dropped it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I will be getting my Twitter account back up after talking with CJ. So, <laughs> but job, definitely Facebook man. is the main one right now. Awesome. Well, like I said, thank you for sharing your story and your heart. It was a hard story to share. So we appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, we have about three minutes left, three to five minutes left. Is there anything you'd like to add? Sure. I just want uh, women to know that, you know, they're, they're never alone in anything. Mm -hmm. Do please reach out, you know, uh, reach out to anybody or my, myself included, you know, um, instead of keeping things bottled up inside, like there was many years, I just kept everything bottled up inside. And then I exploded one day, like a cork. Uh, and it was at the smallest thing that I should never have blown up about. But sometimes that is, you know, that's what happens when you don't release it. Right. Uh, so I find communication, like if I have a problem with my husband, I definitely, as soon as I communicate that out, then, you know, you feel better. Mm -hmm. So, uh, please know that you can reach me at any time on uh, LinkedIn or Facebook are, are the best uh, places to get in touch with me. Um, I'm also at uh, Graham Dorothy uh, 408 at gmail.com as well. Um, I will send you a, uh, an email with that in there as well, CJ, uh, so you can put that in the notes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just taking care of yourself, like CJ uh, had said, Definitely that is key because um, without your cup being full, you can't help anybody else fill their cup up. So, uh, and just really trust, know and believe that everything is always working out for you. And, you know, you, sometimes it's hard to trust that process. Trust me, I get it. <laughs> uh, because there's been a lot of things happening and when you're right in the middle of it, mm -hmm. uh, somebody, one of my good friends says, when you're in the middle of the suck, the suck sucks. Mm -hmm. Well, it does. But, you know, we uh, can get through 100% of our days uh, so far, you know, whether and they may not, they may be a struggle, but we've gotten through 100% of the days so far. So keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and I know uh, Kim Jones says, but if you're walking through fire, if you're, if you're walking through hell, keep going, you mm -hmm. know, just set that trailblaze going and, and walk out of hell on fire because that that's basically what it takes you know once you've gone through that hell you're going to come out the other side just on fire to help other people well i know that eleanor roosevelt quote uh, women are like tea bags you realize how strong you are when you put them into hot water yeah so for sure strength is pretty strong and i appreciate that um and again thank you so much for sharing your heart with us i really appreciate it i know it was not easy so thank you for sharing that let other women know that they aren't alone or even men because men get abused as well um, there's myriads and tons of people who have been through domestic violence that people are like oh no there's no way because their other half is this great person there's no way I don't believe it but that's part of the thing that messes with your head because you're like they're great to everybody else but me what am I doing that's making them want to hurt me right and know that you're not alone in that fact that that happens to more people than people realize and you know that on top of your family's health issues is just a lot to carry, but we have the faith and the courage and the understanding of knowing that we're not carrying it by ourselves. That's why Jesus is walking beside us and, you know, for one of his, and I really, like I said, I appreciate you coming on today and sharing your heart with us. I know that wasn't easy. Thank you so much for having me. I do appreciate, I do appreciate yourself and, you know, I, I do appreciate being here and uh, sharing my story. Awesome. Well, Thank you all for listening as well to The Journey is Real, where we talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their hearts. I'm CJ Peterson of cjpetersonwrites.com. Until next time.